Now today I'm back with another really popular uh, sort of video series on the 5x5s, which is where I uh, take five tricks performed by a particular creator or a particular magician and I analyze those tricks I talk about what I liked about them and why I think that that's a really good choice of material and I think that's really important there's some incredible magicians out there in the world of magic and if I can get an opportunity to watch them perform some of their best tricks and then talk about it then I think that makes really good content for YouTube right now I've done this with Nemid Phoenix and I looked at uh, five of Nemid's favorite tricks that was really popular I then uh, I then did it with Wayne Goodman that was really popular well I had the pleasure I had the honor of going to the magic circle on Monday and uh, last Monday and I went to the magic circle and Lord Harry Harrington was lecturing if you don't know who Lord Harry Harrington is Lord Harry Harrington is an incredible creator of magic he's based in Wales and he's brought out a lot of magic throughout the years he's very closely affiliated with Saturn magic and he's brought out some awesome tricks now he's known uh for a lot of pranks so he's done like uh tricks with uh Rubik's cubes and you pick them up and they bang and tricks with sharpies and you open them and they bang really uh kind of really fun stuff like that but as well as that he also does some really cool strong magic tricks so I caught up with Harry I'll be doing a talk magic interview with Harry soon by the way if you get a chance to go and see him lecture please do so it's a really great lecture and uh I caught up with Harry and I said to him hey could you uh, film five tricks for me? Can you perform five tricks? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about them and talk about why they're a really good choice. Now, whenever I do this with anybody, they don't have to be their own tricks. They can be somebody else's tricks. Um, and yeah, he was he was very nice. We filmed five different routines and uh, some of them are his own, some of them aren't. And I'm going to run those five tricks, talk to you about what I think about them and uh, what we can learn from watching Lord Harry perform those five routines. So without further ado, let's get into this week's 5x5 five five and have a look at trick number one. So the first trick we're going to be looking at is Harry's version of the little hand gimmick. Now, if you don't know what the little hand gimmick is, it's um, the whole idea of you have a coin and, uh, you know, you, you, you put the coin here and a little hand comes and steals the coin and then there's nothing in your hand. And, you know, I, I think it was Michael Amar that I first saw do this, but a lot of people do it. And there's been variations throughout the years. There's been zombie hands and a whole bunch of different stuff. And um, I think one of the best versions I've ever seen was put out by Penguin and it was Roddy McGee and it was using this putty. And he used it to make a coin vanish, a sign coin vanish and appear inside putty. And it was like hand made out of putty appeared. Really, really good stuff. So there's lots of different variations on this. I honestly think um, that the best version of this has now been done because I thought Harry's presentation of this trick is great. Now, there's a lot you can learn from watching Harry perform this. But before we actually even talk about that, I want you to see a live performance. It uses his phone and it uses the little hand gimmick and it's genius. Let's have a look at Harry performing this right now. Yes. Oh, it's seven. Going there. I'm very well. I would like to do a card trick for you. My favourite card trick. Go for it. Right. On a ripple down, what I want you to do is just shut, stop whenever you like. Okay? Yeah. Are you ready? Go for it. So, perfect. When you take that card, don't let me see it, but show everybody else, just do not show me. Matt, I would like to go ahead and place the card in any way you like, Jimmy. Any way you want. Any, any way you want, yeah. Do you want to shuffle them? Yeah. Go for it. Give them a shuffle. <laughs> and then please go ahead and place them in the box. Whilst you're doing that, I'm going to reach in and get my phone out. Now, there's an image on my phone. Don't be alarmed. It's all right. It's all good. <laughs> Can I borrow your hand? Perfect, here you go. Could you please tell us all what it is you're currently looking at? A picture of you and what I'm hoping is your child. You're hoping? <laughs> yeah, good, of course. It is, it is my baba's. Now, she doesn't look like that anymore. She's actually a little bit older now, but this is when she was born. Like, she's a year old or whatever. Okay. Could you please zoom in onto her hands for me? Excellent. What can you see? She's holding a deck of cards. Excellent. Yes, she is. Matt, I'm telling you right now, no one ever gets this question right. Okay. What's the difference between the pack we've got on the table and the pack that my daughter's holding? What's the difference? 
Uh, go on. <laughs> See, I told you, no one ever gets this right. No one ever gets it right. Don't overthink it, Matt. Come on. What's the difference? What's the difference? There's one big difference. It looks like there's a bit torn off there. <laughs> You're not the first who said that. It's the size, Matt. Big hands, big cards, small hands, small cards, right? Oh, okay. Yeah, of course. Now it makes up sense. If you put your hand, your left hand, nice and flat, keep the phone on there. Now, if my daughter could tell me exactly what card it is you chose, would that be an impressive trick? Well, yeah. yeah so she says she's going to have a little look for it. She's actually going to show you, she said. She's going to show you. Are you ready? Oh, she's found it! Was that your card? Wait, it's a two of diamonds, is that your card? Yes, perfect! That's amazing! <laughs> I absolutely love that. Now, I've been in magic long enough to uh, to know what works in a real world environment and what doesn't work. I know that this will absolutely kill. The little hand gimmick is a great gimmick anyway, but most people use it to vanish something. Uh, now, Harry's using it here to make a card appear. But what's really nice is he's made the trick his own. I talk on this channel all the time about making the trick your own, and that's what he's done. He's made the trick his own by bringing out a picture of his uh, his child, showing the picture of his child. That's immediately going to have an emotional connection uh, with the audience. You know, every time you bring out a picture of your kid and you, you bring that into the context of a trick, people immediately pay attention. So it's a great hook line. But then it's not just bringing out a car, uh, bringing out a picture of your kid for for the sake of it. I mean, what we have here is an incredible routine, like a truly incredible routine where, you know, the kid reaches through the, the photo and finds the card. I mean, it's just really good. I love the bit at the beginning where he zooms in and he says, hey, can you see something? What's the difference between this deck and the deck? And everything about this is great. And, you know, I mean, obviously, most magicians that are watching this that have any experience with performing Little Hand will know exactly how this works. But I think the one thing that we can learn from this performance is that it's important to take a trick and make it your own. And don't just do it the same way that everybody else does. And that's that's what I took from this. I thought this was brilliant. I love routines where I get to talk about my children. Child's Pay by Chris Congreve is one of my favorite tricks for the simple reason that it allows me to talk about Ryan and Thea. And it allows me to talk about different things that they do or don't do. So yeah, I mean, this is just brilliant. This is pure genius thinking in my opinion and uh i think that <laughs> a lot of people are going to be doing something similar to this it's great and it just shows how creative lord harry harrington is so there you go that's the first trick it's harry's uh performance of the little hand gimmick now we're going to go on and we're going to look at something else so let's look at the second trick okay so the second trick um and again this is shot at the magic circle all of these are but the second trick is is one of harry's own tricks and he calls this mini me and when i watched his lecture he actually lectured on this trick and I'm really glad that he did lecture on it because watching him perform this I thought this was really clever um, and it, it's basically a card revelation uh, but it's got a, a kicker that people don't see coming I'm not going to say any more I'm going to let you see the performance first of all I am going to talk about it and give you my thoughts on it but let's have a look at Harry performing this first of all so this is Mini Me by Lord Harry Harrington right, cool. yeah. okay I've got a pack yeah. of cards here yep. just going to riffle down and just shout stop whenever you like please okay yeah. Stop. Perfect. Take that card and let me see it. Please go ahead, show the camera. Just don't show me. Excellent. Kev, could you please go ahead and place your card in any way you like? Brilliant. Kev, I'm going to ask you a series of questions. Three mm -hmm. to be precise. Now, you can either say yes, you can say no, you can lie to me, tell the truth, tell it to you. Think of your card for me, please, Kev. Mm -hmm. Okay, Kevin, would I be right in saying that your card actually was a small card? Would I be right in saying that? Yeah. It was. Yeah. Now, for the next one, I don't really want to look at you when I ask this question. I'm going to look away. If I were to say, is your card red? Is your card black? I could judge by your reactions if it's one or the other. So okay. I'm just going to make a statement which you can answer, okay? Your card was a spade, yes? No. Okay. Kev, would it be impressive if I was able to flick the deck and one card would shoot out and I just happened oh, yeah, to be yours? Absolutely. It would be, it would yeah, be impressive. Okay. Yes, we can do this. You see one card just shot out? Yeah. 
I know. <laughs> but Kev, you said yours wasn't a small card. No, no you said it was it a small card, card, but it wasn't yeah. a black card. No. Good. At least I got one of those right then. Yeah. Oh, but it's not a black card. There's no way it could be the eight of spades then, right? <coughs> it was. <laughs> I like, I like it. <laughs> Thank you, Kev. So, I personally think that more magicians should be doing tricks with mini cards. Uh, I think that uh, miniature decks of cards is something that a lot of magicians kind of haven't really explored that much. They shy away from it. And I think it's a real shame. One of my favorite gaff decks of all time is Diminishing Returns. Diminishing Returns is such a strong trick by, um, uh, you know, oh my gosh, why have I forgotten his name? He's a legend. Uh, Mike Powers. So the Diminishing Returns by Mike Powers is such a great trick. And any time you bring a mini deck of cards into into a performance, it's always really strong. One of my favourite things to do is to have a, a, a shrinking card case. So you have a deck of cards, you take the cards out, the card case shrinks, then the deck of cards shrinks, and then you can do Squeeze by Tommy Wonder and put the cards back in. What, um, what uh, Harry has done here is made... Uh, a really strong trick, even stronger through the use of a uh, of a, a mini card. And I I've seen versions of a trick like this before, where you flick the front of the deck and a mini card comes out, but it's not orientated the way that Harry orientates it. So it looks immediately like a mini card comes out. So the whole concept of it is, hey, I'm going to make your card appear and look it shrunk. What Harry's done here is he's he's structured the whole routine. So that, you know, he's revealed the card, he's got the revelation, he's got it correct, he gets the round of applause, they think the trick's over, and then just when they think the trick's over, and the card's sticking out the deck, and they think that's the end of the trick, boom, it shrinks. And for me, it's the equivalent of doing a jumbo coin production at the end of a coin routine. You know, you've done the coin routine, you've got to the end of it, everyone likes the coin routine, and then bang, this jumbo coin comes out of nowhere and nobody sees it coming. Well, it's exactly the same with this. Nobody sees this jumbo, uh, jumbo. nobody sees this shrinking card appear it, it just it just comes completely out of the blue. And sometimes I think that's really important. Having those kicker endings is, I think, what makes magic really strong. It's almost like a sixth sense, isn't it? Uh, the film, The Sixth Sense. You know, apparently, which way the film's going. And then all of a sudden, they pull the rug out from under you, and it goes in completely a different direction. And that's what we have here. This is really, really good. And it's super practical as well. One of the things that I, I think I got from, from uh, Lord Harry and his lecture, and watching him perform the material he does, is that uh, the most important thing for him is, A, the material has to be practical, but B, it has to be visual, it has to be hard-hitting as well. You're not going to see uh, Harry do any procedural spelling tricks or, you know, 21-card trick variants or things like that. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but what we have here is we have a really, every trick has a really strong end and there's normally a kicker ending on top of it as well. And it's magic that's designed to hit and hit hard. And uh, you, you see that in every routine that you're, you're, you know, you're watching on this video. With that being said, we're now going to move on to the third trick, which is not Harry's. It's by Kieran Johnson. Uh, so let's have a look at that right now. OK, so the next trick that we're going to be looking at is the Flash Lollipop production. So the Flash Lollipop production by um, by uh, Kieran Johnson. Now, the Flash Lollipop production is just cool. <laughs> Don't know how else to say it. It's just a really cool trick that I've seen magicians do for years. Like, I remember watching... Um, here and do this on uh, the RSV pre project that it originally came on, and literally just the reactions he got were insane. And then at one point, every single professional close-up magician in the country was doing this. I'm pretty sure that. You know, Kieran and Steve Rowe, to a, to a degree as well, were responsible for more lollipop sales in this country than every kid put together. Because, like, let's be honest, if you could really do magic, making a lolly appear and then, you know, giving it out to the person you're performing for, if you could really do magic, you'd do that. And we've talked about openers on this channel. And we've talked about... Um, when you do an opening routine, it has to be impactful. It has to create an impact doesn't it and it has to uh really 
you know, grab people's attention. It has to be quick. It has to be visual. Well, what's more visual than taking a piece of paper, lighting it and producing a lollipop, right? And uh, it just shows how much of a worker Harry is, because obviously he understands that as well as he wouldn't be including this in one of his top five routines that he performs to real people. But there you have it. It is a great trick. It is an awesome trick. Now, I'm telling you right now, if you've never tried to do the uh, lollipop production by Kieran Johnson, please do so. You can expand on it. Steve Rowe bought out a gift deck a few years ago, which you can get from the Gimmick King. Um, and, you know, it looks like a deck of cards that have got different um, gifts on them, and you can force a lollipop, and then you can produce the lollipop. I mean, there's lots of different ways of doing it, but what Harry's doing here is he's literally just doing is a very quick opening routine to establish credibility. Look, I've got a piece of paper. Boom, now I've got a lollipop. It's strong, it's direct, it's visible, it hits them, and it hits them hard. Just a perfect choice, really. Let's have a look at that, and then we're going to move on to trick number four. Tell me, yeah, do you know what these two items are? I uh, know, yeah, pretty good, yeah. You do? <laughs> Could you please go ahead and move on the cigarette papers for me? Sure. Let's take one out. Mm -hmm. Excellent. I want you to scrunch that up. I'll take the packet back. Okay. Yeah, scrunch that up for me, please. Okay. Yeah, just a little ball or something, but not too small. Not too small. Without putting anything in it. <laughs> Without putting anything in it, no. Okay. 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 <laughs> that becomes a different trick. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to hand you, hand you the lighter. I'll okay. take the paper. Okay. Go ahead, open it up. Give it a light for me, please. Oh, whoa. <laughs> yeah, that's Hold out in front of you. Okay. Excellent. Tell me, this is just for you, mate. And there we have the light bulb for Okay, so the fourth trick was shot live at the Magic Circle. It was shot on the Magic Circle stage, and uh, it was during his lecture. And this is a performance of a routine that he did in his lecture. And this is um, a performance piece. This is not the sort of thing that you would do every single time you perform. You wouldn't do this every single uh, table. This is something that you would keep as a special piece for a special um, guest or a VIP or the bride and groom. Uh, it, Harry says that this is his bride and groom trick, and I can understand why. Before I go any further, let's have a look at a performance of this so you can see exactly what happens. So here's a performance of the routine uh, by Harry. I've got something for you guys. How long have you been friends for? About 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> 20 minutes, you'd say, yeah? No, we've been friends for years. We've been friends for a long time. Absolutely. Years and years, perfect. Okay, I think this would work perfect for people. Um, now, right now, I would like you just to imagine this with me, play around a little bit. We're at a wedding, okay? okay. You're the happy couple. Silly. <laughs> 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 and what I'd like to do is quite simply, and um, this is my trick for you, this is my top table trick for you. Okay. Okay. Now, uh, Marcus, yes. in a pack of 52 cards, there are certain ones that describe people a lot better, or you think maybe like the Joker would fit your uncle or something, you know what I mean? Today especially, what card would best represent you? Uh, four of spades. The king of hearts, Marcus. Yes, yes. of course, <laughs> of course, of course. Yes. Of course. Yes. King of hearts. Uh, Faye, if Marcus has got the king, what card would well, best Well, I would go for the queen, of, but it can get, uh, does it have to be hearts, or can I have diamonds? I mean, it would be better with hearts. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Just for this presentation. <laughs> Pretty sure this is run away with that. Yes. <laughs> queen of hearts. Queen of Hearts, excellent. Marcus, yes. Queen of Hearts, Faye, Queen of Hearts, excellent. And Marcus, what I'd like you to do is take the pen here. I'd like you to give the card on the back a sign, would you? I'll still roll that blank card in there, sorry, yeah. You give that signature just across there. Uh, maybe a big one if you want. All the way across. Nice and big. Sit there. Fill the card out, fill the card out nice. Excellent. Oh, yes, a smiley. I've only got three letters for flavour. <laughs> that, that's three letters, that's three letters in there. Faye, could you please take the pen off? Marker, and could you just go ahead and sign across the oh, Queen, of course. <laughs> go ahead and sign across the Queen, I think. Nice and big. A little bit here. Excellent, thank you very much. So now we've got the King and the Queen both sides. I've put the King on underneath the Queen, so what we should technically have is both your cards signed, correct? Now, 
in your time together, would you agree that you haven't always seen eye to eye? Yes, she's a lot taller. <laughs> oh. Okay, fair enough. Uh, Faye, there's been some troubled times. Possibly? Yeah, would, yes, because yes. she's so much shorter than I am. <laughs> <laughs> Clean over his head. <laughs> so we can all agree that, of course, it hasn't always been plain sailing. But no matter what happens, you're always finding stuff back together, correct? Marcus left, right? Uh, left. Perfect, we'll get rid of left. She's all right. <laughs> <laughs> but you have always found yourself together, correct? Oh, yes. 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 Okay. Here we are. Happily married now. Happily married. <laughs> Come on then. So if we bring your two halves together, we could Ooh. make this one signed half, half card. Would that be that your drawing there, please? Mine, yes. Is that bits of yours, Marcus? Yeah, that's amazing. But I actually don't want to just keep that there. I want to cement something a little bit more. So if I draw a circle around here, maybe a little circle around there. Hey, what does that look like to you right now? <laughs> I know, I know, it's a bit hard. Well, it, it, a circle with it, a dot. I was a circle with a dot. Yeah, yeah. No, I was trying. I'm sorry, I was trying to make something of it. <laughs> it's a circle with a dot, definitely. Don't worry, don't worry. Yeah, circle with a dot. Here we go. If I drew a little square at the top here, and maybe a little bit in there, Marcus, what would that rack indicate now? Uh, it looks a bit like a camera. It's exactly what it is. Exactly. I would like to take a picture of you guys together with your signatures. Okay. Yeah? Um, what's better? Could you maybe just squidge up a bit there with your faces towards me, just a little bit? So I can take a step back and use this camera to really take a picture. Would that be all right? Should I come around to the other? <laughs> yeah, just stand up. That's fine. Okay, let's let the camera just. Uh, <laughs> you don't have to go on your knees. <laughs> oh my goodness, what's going on? Okay. Well, we're kneeling down a bit. Here. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh my. <laughs> Thank you, sir. So I'm going to take a picture of you both right now. Okay, here we go. Are you ready? I know. You can take a seat again. Perfect. Now we've got to wait for the picture to develop, of course. And whilst that is developing, I do have something to keep this as a memorable bit. And also, Marcus, that's for you. Keep hold of that. You have a little easel here. Okay. Yeah. Take apart. Just going to place this picture in there. Okay. Turn it around, that would help, wouldn't it, Marcus? Yeah. I'd find it. <laughs> cool, and we're just going to let that develop for just a second. Faye's itching to see what's on the other side, I know. Let's let it develop for a second. Yeah. I think it's actually worked out really well, guys. Oh, wow. Yeah. You're welcome. Um, perfect. Actually, Marcus, uh, because when I explain this now in a moment, uh, I always give myself a backup. So, of course, I wouldn't want to leave you out, Marcus. So, here we go, a little one for you. So, go ahead and do that. So that's like basically a masterclass, right? That's a masterclass when it comes to a routine. Uh, and there's so much to love about this. But I said earlier on about Harry having a desire to uh, keep things really visual and really different. And this is a perfect example of that. I mean, what we have here is an ambitious uh, not an ambitious, sorry, an anniversary waltz on steroids. I love the idea. I absolutely love the idea of doing a Siamese waltz style routine, um, doing a face off style routine, um, but with with the king and the queen of hearts. That's just great.
because you know combining those two cards into one ripping them up and then fusing them back together and then giving them out as a souvenir first of all that's a really strong moment because you can spin whatever story that you want to spin i i've performed uh, i haven't performed face off my friend nemid phoenix performs it a lot i haven't performed face off but i have performed siamese uh, waltz and uh, it always gets a great reaction when you take two cards and tear them in half and put them back together and then give it out as a souvenir it always gets a good reaction but if you do it with a king and a queen of hearts logically you can then have so much that you could actually um you know weave into a presentation for that especially if you're performing for a couple or a bride and groom or something like that it's just absolutely genius so you've got that moment right there but then um as well as well as uh, as well as that you've got the really great idea and i don't know how well this showed up on camera um and i'm going to i'm going to narrate it or talk you through it so you you know exactly what's happened here harry has gone to the trouble of photoshopping the cards so that when he gives the souvenir card out the king looks just like the guy he's performing for and the queen looks just like the woman he's performing for now what an amazing gift for that to magically appear on the card so not enough to have two cards torn in two and putting them back together. Now, when they go back together, you've got this beautiful moment of the, you know, the, the faces of the king and the queen matching the people that you're performing for. Um, and it looks so good. I was looking at those cards later on and they look great. Now, if there's one thing I've learned from that, it's the importance of making sure that you do something special for the person who's booked you. Now, I I don't do something like this. I mean, I'd consider it absolutely, especially seeing the reactions that Harry got. I tend to do something like Cuban Bottle, which achieves the same sort of thing for me. But I think if you are a commercial close-up worker and you perform commercial close-up magic, I think it's really important to have that trick that you can do for the VIP, for the bride and groom, for the person whose special event it is. Because they booked you at the end of the day, you want to do something that's special for them you want to give them a souvenir that they're going to show everyone and when i say a souvenir i don't just mean a signed card that's found its way into a box that they're going to throw away i don't just mean a business card something really special a cube going into a bottle something like what you've just seen in this trick is the perfect example of an impossible object that they're going to keep forever and really you should look at yourself and you should look at your routines and you should ask yourself a question if you're going out and performing professionally do you have that thing that you can give give to the bride and groom or the clients to really set your performance apart from anyone else because I I you know I, what I took from this performance is you do need something like that and I can imagine um uh, Harry performing this at an event and just bringing the house down this is the sort of trick that I imagine going up to a gig and they've seen Harry and they go oh yeah I saw a magician last week uh yeah he put two cards together and then he made their faces appear on the cards I'd be like, yeah, I can't do that. <laughs> you know, it's such a great trick. Um, having said that, it's not the best trick. The best trick that I saw uh, when I watched Harry at the Magic Circle is what's coming up next. This is the fifth, and I, bet I left the best till last. So the final trick that I want to talk about is um, uh, Harry's... Uh, this is available from Saturn Magic. This is a, uh, a Saturn Magic product. You can get it directly from them, and I'm going to be reviewing it soon as well. This is uh, Harry's version of the ring in uh, candy packet. And he uses Haribo. Now, you can get this, as I say, from uh, from Saturn. I believe it's gone through Murphy's, in which case it's available from all good magic dealers. But this is great. I mean, I love this. Uh, I looked at uh, a version of this by Peter Egging recently. And, and the Peter Egging method is nowhere near as good as what we have here. Having uh, watched the lecture and watched the performance of this, man, I would do this over and over again. This is the sort of magic I like. It's strong. It's hard hitting. It will blow your audience away. If you haven't seen it, I guarantee you, after you watch this performance, you're going to run out and you're going to buy this from Saturn. I know that I have. And I can't wait to review it and tell everyone about it. But let's have a look at the performance. This is Harry's signature trick. This is the, um, the ring in Harry Bow. Yo, <laughs> did you have a ring I could borrow any chance? Uh, yes, take your pick. <laughs> I'm going to use this one. That one? <laughs> yeah. Go for it. Who gave you this? Is this your boyfriend? 
<laughs> I'd rather not disclose. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, who in this room right now is trustworthy to hold on to this? Who would you say? It's a room full of magicians. I'd say no one. <laughs> <laughs> Gary, Sam. Sam, Sam, can you come and join me here, Sam? Excellent. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put the ring in your hand. Hold your hand. As soon as you feel it, close your hand immediately, right? Right? Matt, could you please hold on to his wrist for me, please? Excellent. Now, I've got this. It's a magic wand. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I know. Take it. I'm going to wave it across Sam's hand and give it a tap. That should make your own completely vanish. Sam, did it vanish? Can you no. still feel it? Yeah. Can you still feel it? Yeah, I can. Matt, put a bit of effort into it. <laughs> this is your moment, Matt. <laughs> okay, Sam, did it vanish? Is it still in there? Still in there. Matt, last time, you've got one chance I'm to do yourself. I'm trying, man. I am trying. Give it, give it a little wave and a tap. Excellent. Sam, this has totally, completely vanished from your hand, correct? No. You sure? Positive? Yes. Okay. You can let go, man. I do think you did do something. Okay. Just not what I wanted to happen, unfortunately. Right. I wanted to make it vanish, but you can still feel it. Take your hand and just slowly, Sam, turn on this over there. And finger by finger, open it up. Oh. <laughs> Okay. That's a fiber ring. Yeah. Interesting. Um, but of course, that's not yours. Yeah. Yeah. Matt. It was Matt's. It was Matt's, yeah. It was. The undisguised person's going to be extremely pissed off. <laughs> don't worry, Matt. Don't worry, Matt. Um, I know what you're thinking. Like, where's my ring gone? Would it you be. It crossed my mind. <laughs> <laughs> Would you be happy if I handed this to you and you could keep it and it'd be the best suite you've ever had? Unless there's a really expensive ring inside it, then no. No, I'd tell you, what if, what if I actually gave you a whole pack of sweets? Would that be a bit more nicer? Would that be better? Yeah, if you don't have a mouth, yeah. maybe a lorry load. A lorry load. But don't worry, where that one came from, I've, I've got a lot more, so... Um, I think Matt actually can have that one. I think you might see inside, if I just turn it around, you might, Wait. You might see that in there. Can you see that? No. Is that yours? Dude, what the fuck? <laughs> you take the one. Right, so put your hands together, thank you. Can you tear that all the way down? All the way down. All the way, all the way, all the way. Put your hands together. And that, I think, Matt, would that be your ring? That's the... What the... Yay! Fuck! <laughs> <laughs> How good was that? I mean, seriously, how good was that? That is an incredible trick um, that just, I mean, it's incredible. Anytime you do magic with borrowed rings or borrowed objects in general, it always brings people closer, right? And, and I know a lot of people don't like doing uh, ring flights because they're worried about damaging somebody's ring or the ring flying off. And I can understand that. I've had problems in the past with things like interlace that's made me not want to do interlace again. So I totally get that. But this is just completely bulletproof. And having seen the method for the egging trick, this is like a million times better, like a million billion times more practical and better in every single way, shape or form. This is something that I would happily do in a parlor show. This is something I would happily do in a stage show. This is something I'd happily do close up. Put it this way, I went on Amazon the other day after watching Harry's lecture and I've ordered like a hundred Harry Bob uh, packets so that I can perform this trick because darn this trick is so good. And I love that it's a transposition between a ring and a Haribo ring right so you, you and what's really nice is when they're holding the ring in their hand and I've tried this when they're holding the ring in their hand they don't feel that it's not their ring anymore they feel they still feel like it's their ring and so the moment it it's not a ring to impossible location it's not a vanish where is it gone it's gone over here it becomes a transposition it becomes in their hand I mean imagine that imagine you've got a vanish taking place in their hand but like I say it becomes a transposition and you've got so many beats I've talked on the channel before about the importance of having beats like boom 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 because one of the things that's important to do when you're doing magic commercially is getting a good reaction from your audiences well how do you get a good reaction from your audiences you do that by structuring your routine so there's a, a, an applause point followed by an applause point followed by an applause point right and that's what you have here you know, just when they think the hard work's done before anything happens from their point of view. And it's like, boom, the ring's vanished. Oh, my God, it's turned into candy. Beat. 
Then it's like, oh my God, you're not going to believe this. Look, there's the bag of candy. And right in there is the ring. Beat. Let me tear it open. Look, we're going to tip it out into your hand. Beat. Is that your ring? Beat. It's just, I mean, honestly, I don't think you could follow this. I don't, I, 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 I. I'm planning on doing this. Ryland is planning on doing this. This is really good. Um, we were playing around with different ideas with the uh, the ring hole or whatever it is. In, um, is it ring hole? Yeah. Uh, with uh, Peter's thing. We've chucked that. Don't care. This is so much better. Um, and we're, we're, we're coming up with a whole bunch of ideas and, 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 and I'm going to perform this. I know I am. And when I do... I'm worried about following it. I don't think I can follow this. How do you follow a trick like this? It's incredible. And it's not even that difficult. And I think it's, you know, I always talk about what you can learn from magicians by watching them perform. And what I get from this is you don't have to be doing knuckle busting sleight of hand to create an impact on your audience. This is a relatively easy trick to do, but damn it, it's hard. Really, really hard. And I, I encourage you, if you haven't already got this, go hit up Saturn Magic. They ship worldwide. And go and go and buy this because this is really good.